Good morning, good morning. It's good. God is good. God is good.
splendor and glory, compassion and mercy. Holy is His name. Splendor and glory, compassion and mercy. Oh, arise, my people, we pray to the one who is worthy.
my Lord. And clasped to him, I rose again. His life, the breath in me, his wounds, the final story, his love, my history. For nothing separates us from his love. However wide it seems, the chasm gapes. However long the dry, however aching the aches, nothing. For love took all to death with him, so he can hold us. So he can hold you clean and freed and his. Amen, Father, we thank you for the love given to each one through Jesus, your son, that you saw each one of us before time, before you created, before we were here on earth, you saw us, you knew us, and you loved us, and you love us still. How wonderful, how marvelous is our Lord God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend Christ alone, because
come with trumpet sound. Yeah. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. For this stand. Given 
sang through doubt and fear. In the end, we will see that it was worth it. Turns to wipe away our tears. Oh, there will be a day when all will bow before Him. Oh, there will.
this. If you're tired and thirsty, there is freedom. And if you're tired and thirsty, to Jesus and there is freedom and give your all to Jesus and there is freedom oh there's freedom Jehovah Rapha. God, you are our healer. That healing doesn't stop at the biggest things. It doesn't stop at cancer, but it doesn't even stop at a sprained ankle. Father, we thank you that you are a healer. Father, we raise a hallelujah because you gave us a voice, you gave us a breath, Father God. You died upon the cross for our sins. Heavenly Father, I just pray for the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on the hearts today that are struggling to see. That they come in and look, and they look, and they look, and they look, but yet they still cannot see. Father, I just pray for the veil to be lifted upon, and they can see you for all of your glory, Father God. They can see because they need to know that you are here. They need to know that you are who you say you are. When you speak the great I am, Father God, that is the great I am over everything in your life. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you have control. We thank you that you have victory. Father God, that anything that comes in our way, anything that is a brick wall that may seem a brick wall to us, Father God, is only a little hurdle for you. When we speak your name, the mountains will drop. When we speak your name, the creeks will dry up so we can cross. Father God, when we speak your name, when we have faith in you, Lord God, there is nothing that will stop us. There is nothing that can stand against us because you are for us. Father, so we sing hallelujah. We bring glory to your name, Father God. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on this place. Fire in the hearts, Lord God. Refresh all of our spirits in your mighty name.
Praise the Lord God Almighty with all that is within me, with everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. We praise you, Lord God. You are our Jehovah Rapha. You are our God, our healer. Would you, would you join with me this morning? We want to pray for the Henslin's niece, Emma. Some of you remember Paul and Tracy who are part of this house. Their 14-year-old niece was in a motorbike accident yesterday. She's got some severe injuries. She's in hospital in Brisbane right now swelling on the brain. She's actually in a coma. So we're, just, we're going to pray that Jesus reigns right now in her life in that hospital room. Would you just join with me? Just lift your voice and we, as we pray for Emma. Thank you, Lord. We bring this daughter, this child of God before you. Our Jehovah Rapha, God, our healer, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we command her body to be healed. In Jesus' name, reduce the swelling on that brain. In Jesus' name, we, we pray, Father, that she would awake from that coma, refreshed, restored. Lord God, that you would, you would come and, and just invade that hospital room, Father God, against all the prognosis, against all expectations of the medical profession, Father God, that this would be yet another miracle done in your name. Today, Jesus, we ask in your precious name, be with Paul and Tracy, be with Emma's parents and the whole family. Father, grant them peace at this time and great hope, great faith, great expectation. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Joe, come, come up, Joe. We're going to pray for Joseph, a.k.a. Yossi. He's the son of the house, and he's leaving us. Yeah, that's, that's the appropriate response. <laughs> come on, mate. Joe, do you want to share just what's on your heart? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've heard a number of explanations. Joe's off to the UK for an indeterminate amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Nashville. <laughs> Come on, maybe. Oh, Joe, do you want to? Yeah. Father, all that you are, all that you have declared yourself to be, Father, thank you that you've revealed it to us and empowered us to live in your name and to live lives that are laid out before us, Lord God. And thank you that Joseph, Lord God, has seen and known and called by name from heaven, Lord God. And you've laid out a path for him to walk in it, Lord God. And he, you've empowered and graced him not to, not to miss it, not to be delayed or detoured. But, Father, we declare Joe is right on time with you, that he is, he is walking in the steps that you've laid out before him operating in the good works that you have ordained that he should do them lord god and we we thank you lord that every step of the way he will find himself absolutely at rest in you father god depending upon the grace about which we've sung this morning the faithfulness lord god that is beyond words we to express we thank you that all of that is manifest in joe's life Lord, that he will, he will move and find encounters with you and divine appointments with others, Lord God, in, in order to encourage your life in them and, and, and yours in him together, Lord God, that he can get glory for your name, Father, in every step of the way. Father God, whether, whether it be difficult and, and uncertain or clear and glorious, Father, all of it, he will find himself at peace, at rest in you. Lovely Jesus, in the unforced rhythm of grace, stepping in the path that you've laid out before him, Father. Great grace upon Joe's life. Great favor, Father God. And wherever he goes, Father, may the blessing that he harvests and, and reaps there, let it, let it benefit this house, Lord God, as this son of ours goes forth, Lord God, into the life that you've ordained for him. Father, let nothing, let nothing be robbed. 
Let nothing be stolen. Everything that you have declared from before time began, let it be Joe's experience. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Yeah, and he delights in his way. And you are a good man, Joe, because God is in you and he goes before you. And we love you. We're going to miss you. It, it kind of sucks that he's going, right? <laughs> may, it be for a, may it be for a short time, but may it be for a long time. We don't know. He doesn't know. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of travel involved, a bit of excitement, a bit of adventure, but we trust, we trust you in his hands. And we trust, we trust him for you, mate. Yeah. Bless you. Open doors. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why don't you come and embrace him? Go down. Let them embrace you. Come and embrace Joe if you'd like to. Come on. And if you don't want to do that now, you can do it later. <laughs> Jason Rutch, my man, come up here. This is your last Sunday after a brief visit too, right? Yeah? I heard that you spontaneously showed up a couple, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, bless you, mate. Um, what are you going back to immediately? Oh, I want to say holiday, but probably not. <laughs> yes, right. no, yeah. yeah. um, meeting with some people up in the far northeast to try and secure some funding, but okay. yeah. All right. And then it's all work. Then it's all work. Okay. Well, bless, let's reach out our hands. Let's bless Chase. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for rest and respite. We thank you for these weeks that he's been at home with family, with friends, just being able to have some downtime. And we pray, Lord, may that continue. May he get the holiday that his heart yearns for and probably that his body needs. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray for complete release of his mind, of his thoughts, of, of everything that's going on up here to rest in you and in the providence and the provision of Lord God Almighty. We pray for favour, Lord God, with that funding that he needs. Father, we thank you that, yes, the steps of a good man are indeed ordered by the Lord and here we have another good man because he is in you, Lord Jesus. And so bless him, strengthen his hands, Father God, we ask. And we ask, Lord God, that even as he, when he does go back to work, Lord, we just thank you that it be, that it be light, that the yoke would be easy, the burden would be light, Lord, because he's, he's yoked with you, he's, he's in tandem working with you, Father God, and that you bless him. You bless him. Father God, may, uh, may the, the, uh, the, the days to come be even greater, Lord God, than the days that have been. But Lord, that the work wouldn't be any harder. Let it be lighter. Let it be easier, we pray in your precious name. Holy Spirit, empower this young man. Fill him up afresh. Go before him. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. All right. Bless you. Yeah. All right. Well, Bokru Tov, everybody. That's good morning in Hebrew, and that's all I've got. <laughs> so, I'm going to um, I'm going to share some thoughts this morning. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Where's Tony? <laughs> Tony's here. Where are you, Tony? Give us a wave. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Tony. Where are you, Tony? He's over here. Yes, thanks guys. Come on. And yeah, thank you Tony, thank you Evie, thank you everybody. Um, apart from a couple of ceiling tiles bursting under the weight of the rain last weekend, there didn't seem to be any distress done to the house and I trust that that's true of you uh, as persons as well. That has been a, a, a beautiful time in our absence of the last three weeks. And I heard that you had some pretty good shindigs. You had a bit of fun here while we were away. So that's cool. We, we feel like we're kind of coming back and joining the party a little. Uh, if, if you haven't caught up with what's going on, uh, a number of us have been away. We've been in Israel uh, for two weeks on, on the ground there. We've been away for three Sundays. And uh, wow, what an amazing... <laughs> An amazing experience, an amazing trip. Some of the crew are still travelling. They've gone on to other travels, and, um, but we're here, we're back. I want to share some insights, I guess some thoughts, some reflections. Um, people have been asking, what's been your highlight? Uh, impossible question. 
Uh, you know, it was um, 14 days pretty much of standing in front of a fire hydrant. That's what it felt like. Every day on tour, we'd go to three or four or five different sites. Our tour guide, Stan, is he good enough? Yes, he is. Stan good enough, lived in the nation for 35 plus years, background in journalism, an amazing, an amazing wealth of information that he would pour out to us each and every stop along the way. And where he left off, our pastor Joel stepped in and brought teaching to a whole nother level. And uh, it was just mind-blowingly awesome. And we're thankful uh, that we got to go on this trip. And, and in the name of the Lord and in the name of Flame Tree, as your representatives go and bring blessing to the Jewish people. That was what was communicated to us that this trip was about us going, you know, with the Holy Spirit in us and going to bless, going to speak life, going to love on the people of Israel because God loves the people of Israel, his first chosen people. Um, go ahead and throw that first video up there, Jane. Nearly painting a dead sea rock. <laughs> So there's, um, there's us hard at work. This, of course, is down in the Dead Sea, down in the desert. And there's your pastor's hard at work right there, Joel and I. It is a surreal experience. Still working hard. <laughs> this was a fun afternoon. Joel and I befriended a number of Jewish youngsters who had just finished their final exams at high school. They had just done a push-up challenge and then we went and challenged them to another one and so that's why they were already tired and we beat them out. That's us trying to balance. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's, it's fun hanging around this guy in Israel, because he's got a handle on the language. And uh, just such a blessing. I want to share, I'm, I'm not going to go, I've, I've resisted the temptation to do a slideshow this morning, okay? Uh, but I do want to share some, some thoughts, some insights, uh, I guess. Um, and, and this is where we start, because one of, the, one of the main things that impacted me about Israel is being in a land where time is intersected. And I want to talk this morning about, about time about eternity. You know, Psalm 31, 14 and 15, it says, I will say, you are my Lord, you are my God, my times are in your hands. My times are in your hands. And, and what was made abundantly clear to us in the land of Israel, and this such a, 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 a country of such small space, you know, we, we Googled it, 22,000 square kilometres is the whole nation of Israel. It's about a third the size of Tasmania. It's two Sydneys, pretty much is the whole land of Israel. And here in this nation, we have all the happenings of God interacting with humanity, according to our Bible. Everything that is contained in the, pretty much until we get to the Acts of the Apostles and the mission trips of Paul, etc. everything up to that point is contained pretty much in this land. And so what struck me around day four or day five, we went up to the north in the, in the Golan Heights, and we came to a number of sites within a stone's throw of each other. And I want to share, this is the first site I want to share with you. This is what's called the Gate of Abram. Uh, this is in a, in a um, uh, basically a, an excavated um, city gate that they've been excavating in recent years, which is the, um, the ancient city or, or village or tell of Laish, which is referred to in, in Genesis 14 as Dan. Before, it's, before Dan is even a person, the son of Jacob, it's called Dan, retroactively. But it's where Abram goes when he's chasing, you know, he takes his 318 men and he, and he heads off after the army that, that has kidnapped Lot 
and his family, and they go and retrieve the spoils, and on the way back it says that they come to Laish, and this is in, in Dan. So we're talking 4,000 years-ish of history right here. Within a stone's throw of that, let's try this one. There we go. This is, this is Dan itself. This is the, the, um, the village or the town, I guess, as, as Dan then occupied it. It's a tribe of Israel. Three and a half thousand years late, uh, ago, 500 years after Abram, Again, an intersection, a stone's throw from that previous photo, but 500 years later. These are like the city gates of Dan, of that village. And uh, as part of that town, here we have, this is our tour guide, Stan, giving us a briefing on this point here. This is one of the high places that uh, a little under 3,000 years ago, when the nation's uh, when David and Solomon have, have died and the nations of, 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 northern, of the northern kingdom of Israel and Judah separate, the ki northern kingdom of, of Israel comes under Jeroboam, the southern kingdom is under Rehoboam, son of Solomon, and Jeroboam thinks to himself, I can't have my people in the north going to make sacrifices to Jerusalem, uh, to the temple, because then their allegiances will then be with the southern kingdom. I need to do something about that. And so it tells us, um, First Kings, that he erects two golden calves, again, in the style of the Canaanite worship. One he places at Bethel, and the other he places here at Dan. And this is the site of that altar, of that place where they would come and basically um, make, make worship to this idol. The, the aluminium structure you see there is basically a replica of what the altar would have looked like with the four horns around it. Again, a stone's throw from the ancient, you know, gates of Abram 4,000 years ago, the city of Dan 3,000 years ago, uh, 3,500, this is about 3,000 or a bit under. And in that same vicinity, then we go to this lookout where we're looking out from the Golan Heights, from Israel, we're looking northwest out over Lebanon. That, that land that you can see there is Lebanon. And where currently, real time, currently, there's something like 150,000 rockets um, from Hezbollah that are pointing at Israel, that are, are, are counting the days, awaiting their time, their moment to strike. And so do, do, do you track with me? This, is, this kind of hit me. We're literally walking minutes from each site, a stone's throw from each one, and this whole progression of time, 4,000, 3,500 years ago, 3,000 years ago, now, imminent future, is all there, all within our grasp, and all just like, wow, this is amazing. And as Joel and as Stan um, shared with us a number of times through the tour, you know, we serve a God of eternity. You know, we serve a God who is, who is not limited to our time and space. He, he is a God who was, who is, and who is to come. He is a God who, who isn't, he, he's not constrained by, by the limits of time or, or, or space, but he, he, he steps in as he needs to. He steps in and, 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 and uh, redeems and restores and, and brings about uh, his kingdom in time, but he, is, he himself is not subject to it. He is a God of eternity. And being in, in, in Israel is like, wow, this kind of hits home really clearly, like in, in such a small space. And I'm not going to read the Bible again the same. I, I needed to put that last couple of <laughs> words there, didn't I? I'm not going to read the Bible again the same. Whenever I read the Bible now, there's like, wow, this time and this place, this, this area that God chose, this people that God chose to step in, to, to mark, to call, uh, to work with, uh, is, is Israel, is the nation, is the people. And now, 75 years, they celebrated their independence again last weekend on the Gregorian calendar, the 14th of May, 75 years since Israel has again been deemed a nation 
in the eyes of the world. 75 years of restoration of Jews making Aliyah, coming home to the promised land. 75 years of turning that desolate wasteland that we hear, hear written, written about in, in centuries gone by. Now the, the vines are growing again. The, the prophecies of Old Testament are coming true where the figs are producing. The vines are growing where, where cattle, uh, it's just where the desert is being turned into pasture land, into a place that is livable. That is our God. That is our God. He is our eternal God. He's no respecter of persons and yet... He steps into our time and space. Well, Hebrews 1 says, In the past God has spoken to us through the prophets. Yeah, but, but in these last days, he says, He has spoken to us in the language of his Son. He, he stepped into time and space in the person of, of Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, coming into that space and time to what? To redeem time. To redeem our lives to redeem our lostness so that we may be reunited, reconciled, refreshed, brought back into a life-giving relationship with God the Father. That's our God. How marvellous. How awesome is he that he would choose a nation, he would choose a people to send a Messiah to be the one who would save the whole world. That's our eternal God. He, he is eternal. He's outside of time, yet he steps in time. This might look familiar to you. Around the 1930s, this word started popping up in the streets of Sydney. You've heard the story probably of Arthur Stace, who would spend hours each day for around 30 years of his life, before work, after work, and he would scribble on the, on the sidewalk, on the footpath, on train stations, on the city streets, the one word, a one-word sermon, eternity, calling Sydney siders and all Australians to consider their eternal destination, their eternity. There is a God of eternity, and he calls us to eternity. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says this, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also he has put eternity in man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Let me just read that last bit again. He's put eternity into man's heart. So there's a longing, a, a desiring, a knowing that there's something more in each man's heart. In each person's heart who walks this face of this earth, there is, a, there is an e a place of eternity there. Yet, this other bit, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. In other words, no one can actually understand it. He's put eternity in our, in our heart, and yet there's actually no one who can understand who gets it. And so here again is a beautiful invitation from the God of all eternity into a relationship, into a journey of not knowing, <laughs> of mystery, of being content and being surrendered to, even though I don't get it, there's something in here that resonates. There's eternity in this place and I want to know the God of eternity. He's given that to us, to everyone. But Psalm, uh, sorry, Proverbs 25, 2 says, It's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. It's like he, he throws out the breadcrumbs and he, and he tests the heart of man. Are you hungry enough? Are you hungry enough? Think of the people in your life, the people that you, you rub shoulders with on a daily basis. So many of them know. They know there's a space called eternity that's in their heart, but they just haven't yet been introduced. They just don't know. They're just not sure about the God of eternity yet. And, and so God places us in circumstances, in situations, in relationships that we might be a revealer, that we might be an ambassador of Jesus. Let me introduce you to this God of eternity, the one that you know, the one who is, who is clothed in mystery and yet has stepped into time and place in the person of Jesus and has made himself known. The identity of Stace, Arthur Stace himself, was a mystery for 20 years. Did you know that? That this, this, this mark was making its way on, on the footpaths and the roads and train stations of Sydney and sometimes in Melbourne and other places when he'd travel for 20 years. 
before anyone knew who he was, who was making it. So let me ask you, what do you think of when you hear the word eternity? Most of us probably have a picture of something in the future, a a vision of heaven perhaps, or or what happens after this life. And, And obviously, yes, the nature of eternity is something that goes, time that goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Just working out how many times I can say that. Yeah, you're still with me. And on, thank you. Without end, yep. Goes on forever. It is future bound. But it says that God has placed eternity in our hearts. And in the meantime, it says that everything is beautiful in its time. Think about those words. Everything is beautiful in its time. This word in the Hebrew is the same word that we find in the Greek, kairos. You guys know about the, the word of kairos, the two words in Greek, chronos and kairos. Chronos from which we get chronology, dates and times, schedules. But kairos is the opportune time, the moment, the, the time that is suitable, the right moment. It's the time that Jesus says when he comes in Mark's gospel, Mark 1.15, the time has come or the time has fulfilled The kingdom of God is near. The time has come. The kairos has come. It's the same word that Jesus uses when he's blasting the Pharisees in Matthew 16 and Luke 12. He says, you can interpret the weather, but you can't interpret the times. You can't interpret the times. It's the the same word that Jesus uses when he's weeping over Jerusalem in Luke 19. I won't actually go to that passage. Have a little look at that. And you know the story. It's the triumphal entry. Uh, Luke 19 from verse 29. It says, When he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples. And you know the story. Go ahead, find a, a colt, a foal that's ever been ridden on. Go and, you know, the master needs it. So he comes, Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. There's rejoicing. Hosanna. And the, uh, the, the powers that be say, hey, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And then this, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. When he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in from every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. Jesus is telling about the Roman legions that would come uh, and, and basically bring Jerusalem and all of Israel to a grounding halt. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not, because you did not know <coughs> pardon me, the time of your visitation. You did not know the time of of your visitation. You did not know the kairos of your visitation. If you'd permit me just one more photo this morning. This is Jerusalem. This is a photo that I took from the Mount of Olives, the Mount called Olivet. Just crazy for me, mind blowing. Around on the left, just kind of around the left, it's not pictured here, is Beth Page and Bethany. The scriptures tell us that it's just a, uh, just a Sabbath walk from Beth Page, from Bethany, two little villages which are on the side of the Mount of Olives here. A, a Sabbath day walk into the city. We're looking westward here. We're looking at the eastern gates of Jerusalem right there. In the foreground, Stan informs us, right down here, all down the side of the Mount of Olives is a Jewish cemetery, dating back to the time of David, King David. And I don't know. And I don't, I, I don't know. I don't have any, any grounding for this, but I wonder when Jesus says... If they would be quiet, then the rocks would cry out or the stones would cry out. I wonder if he's referring to the tombstones that are all, that are all around him. That, that the dead would, would, would raise a shout if the living are not giving him praise. And we, and we read in Matthew's Gospel that when Jesus is crucified, a few days later, what happens? There is a number that says that tombs break open. And a number of people coming after Jesus has resurrected. What does it say? That they, some of the ones who were dead walk into the city. I, I, just, I just wonder. But it's, it's this city. 
the city that Jesus came, this city of Jerusalem that Jesus wept over, this city that, that he holds so dear in his heart. And it's... It's no question that Jesus wept over the city because they were blinded. There was a veil over their eyes. It was hidden from them, Jesus said, the time of his coming. You didn't realise the time, but the time is coming when that veil will be lifted. Hallelujah. When we believe that the Jewish people will have a veil lifted and will see and will look with faith upon the one whom they have pierced. They will grieve over him and they will come back to him. And one day... The scripture says Jesus will reign on that hill. He will reign in that city. He will reign from a throne in Jerusalem. That's our God. That's our God of eternity. That's our God who sees everything from beginning to end. He chooses to step in when, when, it's, when it's right to step in. He chooses to, you know... I'll say, you are my Lord, my God, my times are in your hands. My times are in your hands. And so what does that mean for us today? It means that as we worship this God of eternity, it means that we're not left to fate, that he's not, you know, in, he's not disinterested in our lives. But because he stepped in, he steps in. He stepped in once and he steps in and again and again. That's his promise by his spirit who lives in us, that he is actively involved in our lives. He is a God of eternity, but nothing is too small for him to be concerned about in your life. Can you just consider that for a moment? This God of the cosmos who created the heavens and the earth, everything that was, everything that is, everything that will be, this God who is outside of time, this God who has chosen Israel, this God who sits in heaven and laughs at the nations as they make plans against him, is also equally, passionately concerned, interested and invested in your life. He loves you so much. He is so... I don't have the words for it. <laughs> he's, he's for you. We've, we've sung that this morning. We've heard that this morning. He is, he is for you. Everything is beautiful in its time. He has placed eternity in our hearts. And we say everything is beautiful in its time. Everything. Even my commute through the roadworks at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Everything is beautiful in his time. Even the, can I say it, the, the seventh soiled nappy for the day from our infant. Everything is beautiful in its time. Everything is beautiful in its time. Even the ordinary, the mundane, everything. Because the time has come, his kingdom is here. And so every moment is pregnant with Kairos with potential, with possibility. Your chronos moments are redeemed with a kairos mindset. Can I say that? Your chronos moments can be redeemed by a kairos mindset because our times are in his hands and he has stepped into time. If we would have a view of eternity, if we would adopt a view of eternity, Eternity that is outside our time, it's forever and ever, and yet is to be entered into now. Eternal life is something not just to be anticipated in the future, but to be realised here and now in this Kairos moment. You're in eternity right now. Right now. doesn't just happen when you die. Heaven's not just a destination. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is among you. It's within you. It's with you. John 17, 3, Jesus prayed, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, He's talking to the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is eternal life, that we may know him. The, the Greek word for eternal here is aenios, which means age long. We, we talk about, we have the Bronze Age, we've got the Iron Age, the Industrial Age. I think now we're in the Digital Age. 
And there, so Aeneas is age long, and it, this is a, a words from a commentator on this passage. It says it does not focus on the future per se, but rather on the quality of the age it relates to. Hear that? Not on the future per se, but on the quality of the age it relates to. Thus, believers live in eternal Aeneas life right now, experiencing this quality of God's life now as a present possession. And so let me share some other scriptures with you. Note the present tense in these scriptures. John 3.36, the one who believes in the Son has eternal life. But the one who does not obey the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains on him. John 5.24, truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my word and believes him who sent me, what, has eternal life. It's now. It's happening and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Do you see what's going on there? There's a little bit of past, present, future going on there. Take hold of the eternal life. Take hold of it now, right now, in this Kairos moment. Take hold of it, that eternal life, which you were called to when you made your good confession. Yeah. So I'll say that to you as well, church, today. No matter when you said yes to Jesus, no matter when you confessed your faith in him. And if you haven't done that yet, you need to. <laughs> but no matter when that happened today you can take hold of the eternal life that is in Christ Jesus, Amen. that is given to you. Take hold of the eternal life today. 1 John 5, 11 to 13. And this is the testimony God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. God has given us eternal life. It's not just a destination. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Imagine that. The Apostle John's writing these things so that you will know. So that you will know. These are, these are already Christians. They're already believers. Why would they need to know? Well, sometimes we need some assurance, right? Sometimes we need reminding. I'm writing these things so that you will know that you have eternal life. Church, I'm saying these things to you so that you will know that you have eternal life in Christ Jesus. You have eternal life and it starts now. Now. Not when you shuffle off this mortal coil. Not when you breathe your last. Not when you breathe your last, but now. Eternity is here now. Can we just stop for a moment and consider that? Eternity, the God of eternity, outside of time, spanning millennia, before time was even invented, God was. When time is wrapped up, God will be. Our God offers us a piece of that eternity right now. Right now, Kairos, opportune time, this this moment so I'm saying these things so that you will know not kind of think about or wonder about or yeah maybe maybe that's true I don't know I'll go home and read about it later so that you will know it, it strikes me as interesting the amount of fear that's around even, even believers, even Christians, around the end of this age. You know, it's, it's like we've, we've got more, more fear around, more, 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 more faith in, in Jesus that he's going to come back, but not necessarily faith in his goodness toward us when he does. And, yeah, it's going to be an awesome day. It's going to be a fearful day, a reverent, a reverent day. Don't get me wrong. But there's so many with fear around the end of this age or around when we actually go to be in eternity, when we do shuffle off this mortal coil. 
And I've even had it quoted to me, you know, what about that verse that says, you know, that, that when some people come to him and they say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? You know, the verse, and, and Jesus says, away from me, I, I never knew you. You know, some Christians are actually living with a fear that that might end up being them after all this. And I need to say, no, stop. <laughs> That's not written to you. If you are in Christ, it, it says, I never knew you. But, but when he knows you and when you know him, you can know. <laughs> you can know that you have eternal life. There's no question. It's okay. Take the fear away. Take the question away. Live in your faith. The context of that, of that, um, of that passage is, is Jesus is speaking to false prophets. Jesus is speaking to those who deliberately set out to manipulate and mislead others. You know, and despite that, they're you know, somehow able to prophesy and do miracles in Jesus' name. Yada, yada. It's to those people that Jesus says, go away, I never knew you. Not to us, not to you. How can we know? John 3.36, believe in the Son of God. Believe that he came, that he loves you, that he died for you, that he rose again. Simple gospel. If you've never put your trust in Lord Jesus, if you've never actually accepted that he died for you on your behalf, then today is a good day to do that. Today is a day, good day to, to go from a mental ascent, yeah, I reckon that happened, to a life trust, a posture of trust. Lord, I believe that you did that for me, and so I place myself in your hands. I trust you to be my saviour, and I ask you to be my Lord, the authority in my life, that I may live this life in, in the power of your spirit and to the best ability that I can, looking always to you. We believe in him. We obey him, John 3.36, whoever obeys, let me just read that again, because it's said in the, uh, in the negative one, um, the one who believes in the Son has his eternal life, but the one who does not obey the Son will not see life. Yep. So let's turn that around. The one who does obey the Son will see life. Yep. So we believe and we obey. We obey. We sang Majesty this morning and had a picture of the throne room. And what does a king, you know, a majesty, a king makes decrees and issues commands. And what do his people do? They obey them. Our life is to be a life of obedience. What did Jesus say in the Great Commission? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them what? To obey everything that I have taught you. Obedience is key. Obedience is actually the evidence of our belief. Yep. Um, James says, faith without works is dead doesn't mean we get saved by our works. Our obedience isn't the, isn't the keystone. It's not the, but it's the evidence of our belief. Yeah. It gets worked out in our life. So we believe, we obey. We're known, we're known by God. You are known by God. And so, what's that? That hymn, no guilt in life, no fear in death. Yeah. Jesus is alive in me. I don't think that's, that's the other word. What is, what is that word? If you get that line, just let me know. No guilt in life, no fear in death. Thank you, Beck. This is the power of Christ in me. That was worth a shout out. No guilt in life, so that you may know you have eternal life. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. And if you're carrying guilt, if there's, if there's stuff that you need to repent of, that you need to make right between you and God, then as we say often here, do it. Do it. Make it real. Yep. Don't delay. Repent. Return to him, to his ways. But don't flog yourself. Don't, you know, guilt yourself into shame. Don't um, punish yourself because Jesus has taken the punishment that was due you already. Get back on track and show that you love him by obeying him. Show that you believe in him by obeying him, by walking with him. All right. As I was, as I was praying through this message and, and preparing, I was, I was like, Lord, who's, who's in the room? I, I asked the Lord that question. Who's in the room? And, uh, and who's watching on live stream? And... I, 
I've got four different types of people here in the room, and there's probably more, but this is the extent that I got. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read out a description of who's in the room, as far as I'm kind of like sensing from the Lord, and you can line up with one or more of them if you like. But then I'm going to pray, and we're going to do some business with the Lord around the issue of eternity, Kairos, and our times being in his hands. Yeah. So the first, the first group of people in the room, I believe, and watching on live stream, are perhaps those who have never had an awareness of eternity before. Whether you're a Christian or not, your life has always been about living from day to day. It's always been either about the past or about the very immediate now. Your life has been characterised a, by a hand-to-mouth existence. And, and eternity, eternal life, has really never entered your scope before. And I just want to encourage, if, if that's you, if, and if that's you watching on live stream, I want to encourage you that God's kingdom, the kingdom that Jesus came declaring, is always about more. The kingdom of God is here, it's near, it's among you, it's within you. The kingdom of God is expansive and explosive. The kingdom of God is not just about living hand to mouth, day to day, in the now existence. The kingdom of God is, is redeeming the past, it's living eternity, in eternity now, and it's looking forward to that hope that we all share to come. And I just want to encourage you, get amongst it. <laughs> Reorient your mindset to consider this God of eternity who's chosen a land, who's chosen a people, who's chosen you to love him, to worship him, to obey him. Second type of people in the room, those who have always relegated eternity to a distant time in the future. Heaven is somewhere we go when we die. And in the meantime, life is all about Suffering and service only. One day I'll get my ticket to heaven and then everything will be okay. In the meantime, I've just got to suck it up. And to the you, if that's you, I want to encourage you that, yes, there may be some service, there may be even some suffering that you are in, in, engaged in, that, you, that the Lord is, is, is leading you in at the moment. But I want to encourage you also to expand your understanding, your, your awareness that he is, he, your times are in his hands, that he is a God of, of redeeming moments. He's redeeming time. He's a God of second chances. And he's got an awesome plan for each one of us. There are those, a third group of people, those who have a growing sense of eternity in their hearts. The mystery is becoming known and there is joy in the pursuit. Amen. This life is indeed about service and sometimes suffering is involved, but it's all to a greater purpose and to see God glorified. It's still very much a personal journey without much awareness about the global purposes of God. It's still about me and Jesus. And the fourth group of people in the room are those with a growing revelation that God is actively involved in the world today, as well as in our lives. He's especially interested in this city and in the nation of Israel. He is outside of time, yet within time he's fulfilling his divine purposes and inviting watchmen and watchwomen like you and me to enter into his seasons, into his kairos moments, his purposes. And how do we do that? By praying, by speaking and declaring his kingdom come. This is an invitation that the Lord has given to each one of us. To not only know the God of eternity, to not only know his, him redeeming our times personally, but to see his work in the nations around us and especially in the nation of Israel. That's something that is uh, that that's marked, that marks our our house here at Flame Tree. That's something that those who went on this tour ha are now bringing back, and by God's grace, may it be Holy Spirit that you would you would divide the spoils among us all, so that we all uh, reap the benefit and reap the the vision and the calling to be watchmen on the walls, 
to worship and to obey this God of eternity for our own lives, for our families' lives, but for the nations and for the nation of Israel. Yeah. So, Father, we invite you by your Holy Spirit to come and refresh our hearts, our minds, our spirits, refresh our bodies, Lord God, our whole selves, with understanding, with delight, with worship, with a knowing in the not knowing, Lord God, that you have placed eternity in, in our hearts, but invited us on a, on a terrific journey of discovering, Lord, you, our God, who sits outside of time and space and yet has entered in, in the person of Jesus. And so reveal Jesus to us ever so clearly, we pray, day by day. Let us know you more, Jesus, our Messiah. Give us heart, give us wisdom. Give us, Lord, your prayers for your people, your first chosen people, Israel. May we see your kingdom come in that land in increasing ways. We thank you for what you're, you're already doing, that you have been doing, that, that, that the, the times of Israel are in your hands, that the times of flame tree are in your hands, that the times of our families are in your hands, that you are the God who is redeeming, who is restoring, who is shaping our past, present and future. Oh, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. We are humbled, Lord, at your invitation to us to know you, to walk with you and to be your watchmen. Grant us grace, peace, wisdom, we pray, as we seek to serve you in this way. Until we are face to face with you, our King, on the throne, until we step into eternity forevermore, Lord, help us to live for eternity here, now, today. Holy Spirit, thank you for filling us, for refreshing us for ministering to us that we may be ministering to others. In your precious name and for your glory we pray. Amen. 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 All right.